The Fred Allen Show. Judge for yourself. With Judy Johnson, Bob Carroll, and the Skylark. Are you there? Always on time. Here he is, the star of our show, Mr. Fred Allen. Here he is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Judge for Yourself. Dennis asked me if I was on time. I would like to ask Dennis if he was on time on the Herb Schreiner show last Saturday night. I, uh, but uh, I tell you, uh, this past week, of course, the big news has been uh, Arthur Godfrey again. He has done it again. You perhaps read in the newspapers that the aeronautic, uh, aeronautics board uh, suspended Arthur's pilot license and also grounded Arthur and his plane for six months. And I didn't even know about the grounding until this morning. I was in the building here up on the 80th floor uh, in an office there. And I looked out uh, of the window and saw a pigeon uh, 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 flying around, sort of bewildered. And finally, the pigeon came over and tapped on the glass with its beak. And I opened the, the window up, and the pigeon said, where's Arthur? <laughs> and uh, I called Arthur about it and told him about the pigeon. And Arthur said, well, as far as I'm concerned, for the next six months, flying is for the birds. <laughs> But you're perhaps wondering, the whole story, uh, you're perhaps wondering why the pigeon was able to talk to me. And fortunately, I, I, no, I don't hear every pigeon talking. I mean, I'm not that uh, bad yet. But uh, uh, I know this uh, pigeon personally, actually, because this pigeon was formerly a bouncer in a pet shop on 6th Avenue. Because many of the tough sparrows on 6th Avenue would fly in and heckle the parakeets in there, and the pigeon used to throw the, uh, the sparrows out. And through staying uh, around in the pet shop, the uh, pigeon picked up a few words from a parrot, and that was why he was able to talk to me. Of course, I couldn't talk back to him, and it was a one-sided conversation, and I broke it off instantly. But uh, we are here not to discuss pigeons tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are here to present our show. Judge for yourself. It's very simple, and here's how it works. These contestants are going to listen to three up-and-coming songs written by top professional composers. They can win $1,000 if they can match the musical taste of the public and pick the one song our audience likes best. And now back to Fred Allen. Well, thank you, Don. That's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. The makers of old gold cigarettes have $1,000 that they certainly hope that one of our contestants will take home with him or with her tonight. And now let us meet our first contestant tonight, ladies and gentlemen. He is uh, Mr. Maury Goldsmith. Mr. Goldsmith, mm -hmm. it, uh, I know you. welcome to our quarters here. And with our compliments, we want you to have a carton of old gold Thank you. for your smoking pleasure. Now, uh, in your letter here, you, you're from Boston, aren't I you? I am. I notice. Uh, where, where do you come from, Boston? Not far from your old Ballywick, Roxbury. Oh, Roxbury, really? You could throw one of my relatives from where we used to live to Roxbury. <laughs> and it had been done on several occasions in years gone by. <laughs> and in your letter here, uh, Mara, you, uh, you write that you run a drugstore which features a special customer service. Now, what is this special service? I have little bits of homey philosophy that I dispense to my customers and they call me the drugstore philosopher at the Roosevelt Pharmacy. The drugstore philosopher. You are sort of a Seratan Socrates, in other words. <laughs> 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 could, you, uh, could you give us a sample of your, philo your homely philosophy? Well, one of my circulars contained the 15 commandments. I wrote that myself. You wrote 15 commandments all by yourself? I did. Well, that is really wonderful. You know, Moses only wrote 10, and he had a collaborator. And you <laughs> really uh, an accomplishment, I would say. <laughs> well, tell me, Amari, what is your uh, most recent uh, philosophical work? I wrote <clears throat> a poem called, I Know Something Good About You. I Know Something Good About You. And right? I wrote that one, too. Well, of course, I knew, I knew it wasn't written by Senator McCarthy. I knew that. <laughs> I knew something good about you. <laughs> you know, they, uh, they say that the senator will never be happy until he meets the answer man, and then he will. <laughs> 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 well, 
<laughs> well, I hope you don't mind me, Mari. I hope you don't mind me commenting on your poetry. Mr. Allen, I enjoy a good laugh. Well, so do I. I yes. tell my customers that a laugh a day keeps them away from a rut. And the difference between a rut and a grave is merely the size of the hole. <laughs> that is, uh, that is certainly uh, a philosophical uh, thought, uh, Mari. But there is one other difference between a rut and the grave. You can get out of a rut. <laughs> It's certainly been nice talking to you, uh, Mr. Goldsmith. And now it's time for you, uh, the time has come for you to test your skill at judging our songs. Our first song tonight is a rhythm number called A Girl, A Girl. And here are Bob Carroll and the Skylarks to sing it for you, A Girl and A Girl. I know you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Every friend of mine makes this remark. What do they say? I lack the smart. You lack the smart. That every boy should have. Is it any wonder that I feel so bad? La, 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 la. I never had. La, la, la. What every boy should have. A girl. A girl. I need a girl. I'm just a fool. I need a girl. <laughs> Mama says get married now. She's so naive. La, 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 la. She doubts I'd leave la, 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 la. my single life behind. <laughs> Mamma mia, don't you think I'd love to kiss la, 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 la. a lovely miss? La, 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 la. The problem is to find a girl. A girl. Ah. I need a girl. I'm just a bell who wants to ring the bell. Somebody on me now. I need a girl, a girl, a girl, a girl, a girl. I need a was a girl, a girl, which was recently recorded by RCA Victor. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is our next contestant. Meet Mr. Malcolm Easterlin. Mr. Easterlin, welcome to our cluttered quarters here. Uh, Mr. Easterlin, with our compliments, we want you to have a carton of old gold king size. Thank you. Now, uh, Mr. Easterlin, in your letter, you say that you work in a department store now, but at one time, you had your own radio program. That's right. Uh, what program was it? Do you mind telling us? It was based on actual law cases, and it was called Lawyer Q. Lawyer Q. Well, what happened to Lawyer Q? Was it replaced by Robert Q? Or <laughs> <laughs> we're not on television yet, Mr. Allen, but we're hoping. Oh, I see. Well, now, you're currently you're working at a department store. Is that in the legal department? No, I buy gloves. Oh, you buy gloves? Yes. You have a sideline there. Well, a glove buy, at least you can keep your hand in until you get back into television. <laughs> but tell me, how did your, uh, I don't recall your uh, radio program offhand. Wh how did this uh, lawyer uh, cue, uh, how did it work? We dramatized actual law cases, uh -huh. and then we picked contestants from the studio audience to guess the judge's decision. Well, that sounds rather interesting. Could you tell us uh, one of the cases that you used in the past? Well, there's one that always interested me. I don't know why. A boy gave a girl an engagement ring. Uh huh. And uh, two days before the wedding, she said, I don't love you and I'm not going to marry you. Uh huh. So he says, Well, give me my ring back. She says, No. Uh -huh. The question was if the girl breaks the engagement, who owns the ring? Well, usually it's the finance company, I would say. <laughs> 
tell me what, uh, what in this case, what was the final decision? Uh, the court held that the girl had to return the ring because it wasn't an actual gift. Oh, it I was see. a gift in contemplation of marriage. Oh, I see. In other words, if the merchandise is not picked up, the deposit goes back. <laughs> <laughs> Legal. Well, does the boy, tell me, does the boy always uh, get the ring back? Unfortunately, no. If the, if the boy breaks the engagement, it works the other way. Oh, I see. In, that, in a case like that, then, the, the girl keeps the ring and the boy gets the finger. <laughs> I mean, <that> works. <laughs> Diverse in legal law, of course. I uh, expressed it in the jargon of the studio. Well, tell me, as lawyer Q, did you present any humorous cases? Yes, we did. Uh, every show, we always had a couple of divorce cases. Oh, they're funny, huh? They divorce. <laughs> tell me, what what were those like? Well, there was one that uh, happened in the South. Uh -huh. uh, a woman sued her husband for divorce. Yeah. on the grounds of mental cruelty. Mental cruelty, huh? She said that he went around the house uh, banging his fists against doors and saying, I wish it was you. <laughs> well, I, I can see that. He was knocking his wife, and uh, he, she should get the divorce. But I heard of a case of mental uh, cruelty just recently. It seems that the man claimed that every night his wife took a milk bath and slept with the windows open, and every morning, when the man woke up, there were nine cats in bed with him. <laughs> and uh, he, he lost the case, and uh, she got the cats, and he could see them once a month, as I recall. <laughs> well, it's been very nice talking to you uh, out of court, Mr. Uh, Easterlin, and now the time has come for you to... <laughs> I must have borrowed somebody else's tongue for tonight. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the time has come for you to test your skill at judging our songs. Our second song presents Judy Johnson with a song called What Is This Thing That I Feel? Now, this song is from the new motion picture, The French Line. And here is Judy Johnson and What Is This Thing, What Is This That I Feel? <laughs> I blush like a tree of Macintoshes. Am I walking on air in my galoshes? Or is this really love? What is this that I feel? Do I chill cause my blood is getting thinner? Did I eat something miserable for dinner? Or is this really love? What is this that I feel? Should I start quoting passages from Chaucer? Should I fly like a supersonic saucer? I was. If it's love that I feel, I'll give it the seal of approval. If it's real, if it's real, if it's real. was What Is This That I Feel, sung by Judy, ladies and gentlemen, which was recently recorded by Mercury Records. Well, here's our next contestant, ladies and gentlemen, on Judge for Yourself, Miss Candy Lee. Can, is Candy your first name, really? Yes. 
candy, huh? Mm -hmm. Tell me, uh, uh, how old are you? I'm 12 years old. 12 years old. Right. Well, I tell you, Candy, the makers of old gold cigarettes want you to have a box of candy to uh, join you in your name. Thank now, you. In your, you're entirely welcome. There's more to come. Conversation is on the wing here. <laughs> Candy, in your letter you say that you are a disc jockey on a children's show at station WDOK in Cleveland, Ohio. That's right. Well, tell me now, at your age, how did you ever become a disc jockey? Well, I was on another radio program, and the station WDOK heard me, and they asked me if I'd make a, well, sort of like an audition record. Uh -huh. And I rushed right over, and I did, and they played it for a sponsor, Jack and Jill Kitty Shop, uh -huh. and they liked it, and I've been with them, WDOK and Jack and Jill Kitty Shop, for the past three years. You mean Jack and Jill Kitty Shops have uh, uh, your sponsor? That's right. I gathered that. I, <laughs> I often wondered whatever happened to Jack and Jill after they went <laughs> over the hill. They're in the <laughs> And you've been working now uh, at this st uh, station for three years? Yes. That is a real success story, isn't it? Tell me, uh, you don't mind it, my prying a little. Tell me, how much do you make? I don't get paid. <laughs> you don't, you've been working for three years? and you don't get paid? That's right. If my sponsor is looking in, he may get an idea. I'm sorry. <laughs> brought this up. Well, tell me, when did you first uh, get interested in show business, Candy? Well, it all started when I was about five years old, and I tried out for a part in one of Bob Hope's pictures, but I didn't get it. You didn't get it, really? No. Well, if you were still working for nothing in those days, why didn't you get the part? <laughs> Mr. Hope said I was too heavy for him to lift. Too heavy? Only five years old and Bob couldn't lift you, huh? Well, it proves that they don't know how to raise children out there in Hollywood. I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, or maybe it was one of those road pictures he was going to make and the road was uphill. No, that isn't it. That was Sorrowful Jones. Oh, Sorrowful Jones. That's and you right. didn't get Sorrowful Jones. Well, what made them decide that you were, were too heavy? Uh, did they want a light comedian for the part? No, Bob Hope said that he wanted a girl that weighed about 48 pounds and I weighed about 49 pounds. Oh, just a lot of that. I never knew that they weighed in the actor. Uh, uh, by them by the pound. He and Crosby would think of that. Well, I, uh, I tell you, 40, I tell you, 49 pounds today, I think Bob is carrying that in front of, uh, just uh, on himself there. But it's been nice talking to you, Candy. We haven't uh, arrived at many decisions here, but we'll have to take them up later after the show. We want you, uh, we, uh, we have to hurry on because the studio is falling in. You hear it. And it makes clothes in on us here. But this is our, our third song, our third up-and-coming song. It's called Here. It's a romantic ballad that should be a hit a uh, song very shortly. And here's the whole old gold family to sing it just for you, Candy. Here is here. Thank you. You like it.
Judging time. If any of our contestants can pick the one song our audience likes best, he can win $1,000. If there is more than one winner, the contestants will share the prize. While our contestants are making their choices, here's the word. I see the decisions are in, so here once again is Fred Allen. All right, Dennis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, each of our contestants has selected a card naming the song that he or she likes the best. And now, let us see which song the audience likes the best. You will see the results on this special meter, which adds up the exact amount of applause you give each song. The first song you heard tonight was A Girl, A Girl. I'm just a fella who wants to ring the bell up. Nobody on a nail up. I want a girl. Our next song was, What Is This That I Feel? What is this that I feel? Is it real? Is it real? Is it really love? Our last song was, Here. According to our old gold applause meter, ladies and gentlemen, the song our audience liked best was here. And now let us find out if any of our contestants has selected the winning song. Mr. Goldsmith, which song have you selected, please? This is my choice. What is this that I feel? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. And Mr. Easterlin, which song have you selected? I picked What is this that I feel? I'm terribly sorry, too. And Candy, which song have you selected? I chose here. <laughs> $1,000. Well, congratulations, Sandy. The, uh, can Sandy, I <laughs> scotch with the money already. <laughs> Candy, the, uh, the makers of Old Gold certainly are happy to have you take our $1,000 home to Ohio. We hope you like the show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next Tuesday night with Judge for Yourself and Bob Carroll, the Skylarks, and Judy Johnson. See you next Tuesday night. Good night. Good night. Want to play some rock and roll? Just tune in and play. Weekends at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, 9.30 a.m. Pacific.